Is the demise of video games greatly exaggerated? Well, I think it is. I think it's part of not understanding the industry and, and not understanding uh, two things that, that the industry is really a part of. One, that it's an entertainment form, and entertainment forms typically uh, have peaks and valleys. And secondly, it's very, very much attached to a dynamic technology base, which can drive it forward at any time. We think this is a step in the right direction. But, Don, why would one want to go into an arcade, play Star Wars, when you've got so many sophisticated games at home that you can use on your own TV set, and I want to emphasize that word, so many. Maybe you're just getting into a crowded market right now. I think that the value that Star Wars offers the game player is probably a state-of-the-art experience as far as video games are concerned, because it's truly not the home product that can offer this experience. But more importantly, there's a lot of us Star Wars buffs have been, been waiting around for about six years now to be Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. in a very interactive, personal way. And this uh, provides that opportunity. Are you drawing literally from the Star Wars motion pictures? Even the theme music is in it. We are, not only are we borrowing, this is a video game interpretation of uh, various events from that film. And we've duplicated them, we think, very accurately. Is this the best time for a new video game? The video game market is a market that uh, has uh, reached uh, some difficult times recently, obviously. Uh, but we think that uh, the ability for that marketplace to, to revive itself does exist and must start with the coin-op area. But the coin-op area is where the great, great, great games begin. They are where the home games that are very successful evolve from. And so if we can establish successful products at this level of the business, going on to the consumer side of the business is uh, pretty much assured for us. Most um, coin-operated arcade games are a quarter. What's your game? How much? It can be a quarter or it can be 50 cents. A sit-down model such as this one here with the type of graphics and the audio and the sound effects and everything, many, many players will be willing to play, pay 50 cents to play this. <laughs> uh, You're betting. You're hoping. No, no. We, we <laughs> actually, That's a lot of money. That's we a know that from the research. We know uh -huh. that from the research. Our research has been very extensive. We've had probably about three months or more research with this product head-on-head head against the other top product in the marketplace on 50 cent play and it has performed without uh, any drop in the earnings whatsoever. It's been very consistent. You've been showing your new video game to those in the investing community, those on Wall Street. Generally, Bob, what's been the impression from those folks in the financial community? Encouragement. There's certainly still caution, but there's encouragement. And of course, we're not going to overcome the difficulties that we've had in the marketplace overnight, but this is a step in the right direction. This is new technology, a lot of technology here that's never been seen before by players. It's very exciting, it's very thrilling. It's uh, a very much a breath of fresh air in an industry that probably had reached some plateaus in the last year or so. So we're, uh, we're encouraged that we're on the right track. For those of us that have had some shares of Warner Communication in the past, and I emphasize that word in the past, uh, we're looking at different products the company is developing through the Atari division right now. Do you feel that Atari will continue to be a drain on its parent company? Well, I think that uh, one of the things that's important is that the coin-op division has been profitable for the first two quarters of this year, and we expect it to be profitable for the, for the next two quarters of the year. And if we can stay healthy in coin-op and continue to be successful creating games like Star Wars and Pole Position, some of the other uh, successes that we've had, then that's really where it has to begin, and I think we're doing that. Yeah, but Don, the question that comes to mind right now is you've got this thing, which I must say is not a cheap prefabricated job. I've had a chance to look at the machine. It's a sophisticated piece of equipment, well built, sturdy in construction. Uh, it's going to take a lot of wear and tear. It's going to have to. What age bracket is this going to appeal to? We see this as being particularly targeted to the uh, probably 12 to 22 year old male predominantly. Uh, some females may, may be interested in playing it, but you have to realize that when you're playing this game, you really are Luke Skywalker. That's who you're playing through the eyes of Luke Skywalker. It's a first person perspective. And so we think that uh, mostly the males in our playing population will be the ones that relate to this. That age bracket again, 16? Probably 12 to, 12. to, to, to uh, 22. I, I wonder why our 35-year-old studio technician couldn't get out of it. <laughs> well, he was in there for about an hour. We couldn't pull him out of it. Well, maybe it does appeal to a few other people, huh? Well, I think age bracket. It I'm, I'm a little bit over that age group myself. <laughs> and uh, I honestly have one of these in my office. I play it uh, continually, regularly. Are, are you making the kind of a video game that will pull Warner Communications up by its bootstrap, pull it out of the muck and mire, saying things like that? Well, we think that, th that the video game industry is still in its infancy. We're, we're not about to say that, uh, that it's over. Uh, if anything, this can be regarded as Atari Strikes Back. 
uh, to coin uh, one of George Lucas's uh, titles. Uh, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of things to do yet in the industry with regard to uh, laser disc technology, with regard to music, with regard to voice. Uh, the whole concept of interactive entertainment uh, is alive and well in video games today, and our objective is to create more games like this. Are you associated in any way with George Lucas, the producer of the Star Wars trilogy? Well, we're licensed on the Star Wars properties, and then we also have a uh, joint agreement, joint development agreement with the Lucasfilm people in, in developing games jointly. So, uh, yes, we're very involved with that. Yeah, but suppose I'm a 12-year-old kid, and I go to sleep under my Star Wars blanket with my head on the Return of the Jedi pillow, wake up in the morning and uh, go down to the arcade and play the Star Wars game after wearing my Star Wars booties. Hey, come on, we've had enough of Star Wars. That's I, enough. We're I would say that with. you've had the complete experience then when you get a chance to play the game. <laughs> And really, it's, it's unique in that it's the first time that the player has had the opportunity to be really interactively involved. Better than the tour at Universal Studios, now that we I think so. Right. <laughs> Don Osborne, thank you for sharing the very latest chapter in the Star Wars and video game scene with us on today's program. Don Osborne, Vice President of Marketing for Atari, which is a division of Warner Communication. Now, of course, we're not saying that this is the answer to all the problems at Warner Communication, but it does prove one important fact. Atari is in their pitching for their share of the video game market.